Uh, I'm Glyn Dewis. I'm a photographer and a retoucher and trainer uh, based over in the UK. I'm doing uh, sessions over in the Adobe Theatre and it's mainly to do with uh, professional retouching techniques. So we're talking about compositing where we're putting one element into another picture, um, showing some lighting effects, some special effects and a few little tips and tricks as well. So I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop CC. Uh, the latest version now um, and Lightroom as well um, but mainly today we're talking through uh, the new techniques within Photoshop CC so we're covering a lot of the new stuff that's been introduced um, like perspective warp and stuff like that but also showing some of the things you can do with older versions as well um, and personally I think the uh, Creative Cloud, the CC is, is a good thing, it's a good way to go but I, can, I totally understand why some people have maybe misunderstood it um, because some people like to have that physical possession of a CD or whatever to put into their computers but when all said and done it's you know you've, you've got the software on your computer some people think you have to be online to use it and that's one of the issues that you know, people like myself and my colleagues who teach this kind of stuff that to explain um, but, but I think it's a good thing I, I never wanted to wait 18 months for all the updates now it's almost like daily or sometimes weekly we're getting updates coming through so I love it. I think it's a great idea. That, now that's one funny thing with the um, with the Creative Cloud. Before that came along, I was using um, I was using Lightroom. Uh, I was using Photoshop, obviously, and I'd kind of dabbled with Premiere because I wanted to start doing some videos and stuff. But now that I've got all the package, I am finding myself using more things. Like I've really got into using Adobe Audition now as well, uh, and I'm looking at playing with After Effects. And that's stuff that I wouldn't have played with before had I not had it. So. The only thing I need now is more hours in the day. That's all I need. So. Uh, I, I'm shooting at the moment. I've got a, a Canon 5D Mark III. I did shoot with a uh, with Nikon before, but as of I think it was September time last year, I changed over. Um, and I've had a load of people saying to me because I've used I used Nikon for a long time. Why have you changed? And, and the reason I changed to Canon was it kind of it, it seems like fit for purpose for me. It seems to be suiting how I shoot, uh, how I work, and. I, and just the, the way that the, uh, the, the files turn out, the actual skin tones, it's just a personal preference, but I just, it, for me it just seems a better system. So I'm not, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but certainly for me, it's definitely fit for purpose. Okay, thanks very much, I'll uh, enjoy the show, I'll see you around. Hello, 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 there we go, right. I feel like a DJ up here now, we've got the microphone here. We've, uh, the last couple of days we've had a microphone where it's been like Madonna, where it's round your head, but now when I'm up, it goes wrong, and I've got to use this thing here. So I've got to do my uh, my pop star bit. Okay, so we're going to go through Paint Shop Pro Seven, yeah. <laughs> Just checking you're awake. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be Photoshop. We're going to go through some uh, tips, tricks, and techniques. We go through uh, lighting effects, some compositing techniques for doing cutouts, and a few other little odds and sods. But before we start anything. All I'm going to say is don't be tempted to write notes. I don't want you to write notes, okay? Just sit there, relax, listen to this guy with this strange accent and just take it in. And the reason I say that is because I want you to get your phones out, your mobile phones out and take a picture of that. There's a little link on the bottom. This is my paparazzi bit. This is where my, my fame bit. So take a picture of that there. That's going to give you a link. Uh, and I'm not going to bombard you with loads of spam or any kind of that rubbish. Basically what that's going to do is that's going to tell me that you are here and I'll send you a link to videos that are going to go through the techniques. So you can just sit down, watch them in your own time, okay? Because we're going to go through this really quick. Okay, I'll try not to talk too fast, but we'll do the Photoshop stuff fairly, fairly quickly. And if you remind me, I might, I'll probably show you that at the end. Um, but we might as well, uh, should we crack on? Should we get going? because we're limited on time. Right, let's just try and... Hello, hello. How does this thing work? Can you still hear me? Yeah, you can, right, okay. There we go. Right, okay. This is going to be interesting. Right, let's uh, start off then. We're going to go uh, start off really simple, first of all then. And we're going to go through... Um, a very, very basic lighting effect, okay? We'll start off nice and slow, nice and simple, and then we'll build up. But this is a, a technique that I've shown quite a few times, um, but it's a great effect, okay? I love this because it's nice and quick. Quick story about this picture. I had a, uh, a commission, it was a paid job, 
to do, uh, I'm used to walking around. Uh, I had a paid job and it was a, uh, a theatrical company, uh, but I wasn't allowed to go to the location before the photo shoot. Now I'm a bit of a, I'm a Virgo, I'm a bit of a control freak. So I like to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, what I've got to do and all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't allowed to go to the place beforehand. But I was given two hours to do one side of A4 worth of pictures. So we're talking maybe 30 pictures in two hours. So on the day I go to the location, I'm with my friend called Noel. We set up all the lights in all these places. We think, yep, yeah, we're good to go. We're going to be fine. We're, 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 we're controlled here. The cast and the crew then turn up and then it all changes. The art director says to me, Glyn, bit of a change. Uh, it's now two sides of A4 and you've got one hour. It's like, okay, ever the professional, calm on top, <laughs> below, okay? But that's when I switch into Photoshop mode because I, uh, I sort of started in this whole world, uh, this photography world as a uh, retoucher. So then I switch into Photoshop. So let me just show you, this is the, uh, the final kind of picture here, but the out of camera shot was this one, all right? So I've got a technique here which I call the never ending lighting rig. Now, if ever you work with anybody, if you have a, a partner or whatever, they're going to love you for this technique because it means you don't take many lights on location. All right, You're, I only take maybe three lights, mainly three lights. But here's what we're going to do. You can see that the light on these people here, there on their faces is fine, but the back wall where we've got these really nice paintings, it's all gone very, very dark. So all we do in this case is we add a blank layer and we just get a brush. There's a few things in Photoshop, if you can grasp them, you're gonna, your retouching will just go to another level, as you know, arty word, another level. Um, so if you get to know brushes, masks, and blend modes, you get those three sorted, you're gonna totally change. Okay, so what we do here then is we go, uh, we get a brush, we go a white foreground color here, and all I'm going to do is choose a normal brush, okay? A normal soft edged brush. And I'll make sure there's no settings in there, so it's just a basic brush. And then what I do is I just go dab. Now, I know it doesn't look all that realistic at the moment, but in the UK, I don't know if you have it here, but we've got a program on TV and it's called Most Haunted. And there's a woman called Yvette Fielding who's like the host. It's like about ghosts. They go to all these old houses. And on the program, they'll have these things. They go, oh, look, it's an orb. It's an orb. It's a spirit. It's, it's a lens flare. Ask Frank, it's a lens flare. But they'll have you believe it's a spirit. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, but here's what we do. We've got this little dab of light here, uh, and then we can uh, just come over to the blend modes over here, and we change this one here to overlay. And it, something, something's definitely happening, all right? But let's just make it brighter so we duplicate it. And then I'm, like I told you, I'm a control freak. We put it into a nice, tidy group, and then we can resize it. So now we have a light source that we can use like this. We can start to, to paint it in around our picture. Now, what I love about this, here we go, we're on the move again. What I love about this is the fact that, does anybody here use Lightroom? Somebody? Yeah, okay, camera raw. You know in the, in the latest updates, so you've got the, the radial filter where you can actually paint in areas now and you can have different settings like exposure and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's different to that because all that radial filter is doing is just brightening the area. What we're doing here is using a blend mode, and that interacts with the contrast in the image. And that's important because as we come down this wall here, it kind of flips. That light source seems to change as if it is actually going down the wall and then at an angle. So it really does sell the fake, if you like, okay? You know what you've done, but the people getting the picture, they just think the lighting was really, really cool. All right, so it's a bit of a trick. Now, is anybody here, don't answer, anybody here from Germany? Nine, <laughs> nine. Okay, close your ears for a second. Uh, I did this in Germany, this technique in uh, Cologne at Photokina two years ago. And I thought it'd be quite funny. Uh, does anybody here have heard of Scott Kelby? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I did a cutout of Scott Kelby's head and I put it on one side of the picture so you couldn't see it. And you can do animation in Photoshop. So I've got my, my uh, pen and I'm going around with the light source. And I'm going, it's amazing, this technique. I love it. You never know what you're going to find. And I bring it down here. And when I get to this point, I press the space bar. And Scott Kelby's head comes in. It goes, hoo, hoo like that. And they just sit there like. 
Okay, next technique, we'll move on. They're a hard audience, Oliver, they're a hard audience. Okay, right, so that's one technique there. I've got a real fetish for, uh, for lighting techniques. So let me just show you another lighting technique that I use a lot. And it is probably the world's simplest lighting effect you'll ever learn. This is a, a picture here of a, uh, a female uh, boxer from the UK called Sam. Uh, we did some promotional shots for her. Um, but the out of camera shot, or once had a little bit of retouching, but nothing major, was this one here. So I've kind of photographed them, and all I'm thinking about is the composition and the lighting, the, shad the highlights and the shadows, okay? Now, I think generally, I mean, we're all photographers in here, right? So when we look at that, we kind of understand where lights have been, highlights, shadows, and all that kind of stuff. But I think the average person, the average John or Jane in the street who isn't a photographer, I think without even realizing it, when they look at that picture, the one that's not finished, in their head they're going, what, why have they got highlights? Where is that coming from? It doesn't kind of make sense. Do you know what I mean? So my job when it comes to the retouching is, I like to add the light sources in later so that everything slots into place and then does make sense. So I like to do that. So this is how I do it. And you're going to be wondering now why on earth this guy was paid to come from the UK to show you this, because it is like crazy simple. All right, what we do then, again, we had a blank layer. We get a brush, and it's a nice, simple, plain, soft-edged brush. And we put a dab in the middle. Then we go for the really technical part. Well, then we go for the really technical part, and we go free transform, and we just make it huge. Okay? Move in, get the move tool, and we drag it to the top. Okay, so there's your light source. Really, really simple. I do that a lot. And you can move it around to put it to taste where you want it to be. So we'll go for something like that. But then there's one extra little thing that I like to do. When it comes to retouching, it's the small things that make the big difference. Okay, this is why the best advice I was ever given in retouching was to slow down. Don't be tempted because we've got 500px, we've got Flickr, we've got our websites, we've got Facebook, Google+. We do a photo shoot, we get them online as quick as we can. Slow down. Because it's then when you look at it after you've done a bit of retouch and you think, what else could I do to this picture? What else, what other little things could I do? So, this, and this is incredibly simple. All we do is we use something that the Germans called noopsies, or we use something that the UK called thingies because I couldn't think of anything else. So here we go, we're gonna make it a little bit different. We're gonna go File, and uh, we'll go to Place Embedded. And I've got a little file on my computer here that looks like this. And all that is, I call it thingies. And like I say, the, in, in Germany, they call them noopsies, um, because what else do you call it? I don't know what else you would call that. But basically, what that is, that's rain. That there is rain. Now, I'm gonna give you one guarantee today that after this session, from this day forward, you will see these everywhere. I guarantee it. Movie posters, DVD covers, all kinds of action pictures, you'll see these everywhere, all right? Now, to get this picture, all you need to do is come to the UK when you've got a day free, okay, to photograph some rain. So you come over, you get your camera, you, you focus on something maybe this distance away, and then lock the focus. Go outside at night when it's raining, you pop up flash and take some pictures and that's what you're gonna get. And how we use these is very simple. We just use blend modes. You see, brushes, blend modes, and layer masks. So all I'm gonna do now then is I'm just gonna go from normal to screen. So I'm basically telling Photoshop, get rid of the dark, just show me those little light bits. These look like dust. Because this is a gym, it's dirty, it's grimy. And we can generally, when we look at these lights here, you're going to see bits of dust in the light source. So this is kind of mimicking that kind of feel. But we don't want these light source or these dust, we don't want it everywhere. What we want to do is just get it into the light here. So we add a layer mask, we get a brush, sorry, we get a gradient over here. And I'm going to have a black foreground colour. Now when we use the gradient, we use the second one. And the reason for that is we don't go from black to white, because if we use black to white, every time we put a gradient down, it replaces it. We want to do multiple gradients. So I'm going to choose the second one here. We click OK, and then all I do is just drag. And I start to drag it off areas I don't want it, and I can lower the opacity like that. 
So it's a very, very simple, basic technique that it just takes your retouch into the next kind of level. I hate that phrase, but it sounds so arty, doesn't it? But you know what I mean? What else do I say? It takes it to another level. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that you can do there. All right, okay, let's have a look at something else then. Let's have a look here. I've got, is this a good pace? Is this okay? But don't worry about it, you've got the videos you can have a look at anyway. All right, let's have a look at uh, this one here. I'm going to show you how you can put a six pack on anybody. All right, a six pack on anybody. The old rock hard abs. Well, almost anybody. Some people you might have to use a bit of liquify as well to kind of complement it, but I'll show you how you can do a six pack on everybody. Now, the great thing I love about Photoshop is that there isn't one technique that does one thing. Techniques in Photoshop can be used on so many different things for so many different kind of results. And I kind of stumbled across this technique purely by accident, and I tried it out on this picture here of a guy, uh, Iron Man. Now this is a, it was a, an original photo shoot that I did, a guy up in uh, Halifax in like, the north of England. And this guy's a car mechanic, but in his spare time, as you do, he makes Iron Man suits, you know? I suppose it's better than going out drinking. He stays at home and makes Iron Man suits. Um, but I wanted to make this look as if uh, it was a, a big sort of explosions going off and he had loads of dents because a, the partly retouched picture is like this. You know, I've, I've done a few things to it, but we wanted dents and scratches and all that kind of stuff. So here's how we do it, because you can see on his body armor where those dents and all that are coming in just there. So what you do, you go online to Google and you look for a picture of a car with a dent in it. Now, true story, when I did this, I posted this tutorial on my uh, YouTube page, and I, I did the tutorial, posted it online, and a guy called Chuck U. Bailey in Wisconsin, in America, emailed me and said, that's my daughter's car. I couldn't believe it. The world is a village. I tell you, the world's a village. Um, so anyway, what do we do? And, and this is relevant, because this shows you how you can get abs on people. But what we do is we get our freehand lasso tool and we make a very, very rough selection of this uh, dent like that. We get our move tool and we drag it over into our picture of Iron Man. And we zoom in, we can now resize it using free transform and we'll rotate it to somewhere like that and just put it over this part here. Now, one of the things I'm trying to uh, educate people about more and more nowadays is working non-destructive. Do you guys know what I mean by working non-destructive? because we have smart objects, smart filters, so that if we make any mistakes later, we can always go back to it and change it, rather than having to redo lots of work. So, because I'm gonna use a filter, I'm gonna use a smart filter. So we go filter, convert for smart filters. Then I'm gonna go uh, filter, other, and high pass. And we'll take it right down. So now I can use this little slider to decide how dented do I want him to be. So we'll go to around about there, let's say. We click OK and we change the blend mode to overlay. So it's kind of there. There's definitely something happening, but it was really kicking off. Explosions, debris, you name it. It needed to be more dented. So I just double click on high pass and I go, yeah, yeah, really kicking off. Loads of denting. And I love that. And when I saw that, I thought, Do you know what? I reckon there's something else we could do with that. We could do six pack, and this is how I think. I have the weirdest thoughts that come into my head. Uh, so I keep a notebook all the time with me to make down notes of these weird things that come in my head. But I did a photo shoot with a guy called Steve Cook. This is a, a, a partly finished picture here. Uh, he's a, a UK guy. He's a, a kickboxing champion. He's number one in the UK and number two in Europe, I believe. And we'd organized a promotional photo shoot for Steve uh, two months in advance. Uh, and uh, he was going to do his dieting and all that kind of stuff, get ready for the photo shoot. So on the day of the shoot, I turn up, and then the excuses start coming out. Oh, I've not been well. Uh, the diet didn't go to plan. Uh, usually my abs, they're amazing. Uh, usually I've got really good six-pack, but today they're not looking that good. But I kind of go, not a problem, not a problem. It's all about the photography. It's all about the lighting. Okay, so, and that's what I do. I want bodybuilders, because I do a lot of that work with bodybuilders. I want them to come back to me, because they go, that, that guy never makes me look like Glyn does. I always look really cool, and I go, well, it's all, you know, I used to be a bodybuilder, I understand the lights. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's Photoshop, but I don't tell them that. Uh, okay, 
Because I can say that about bodybuilders because they are vain devils. I used to be one. So, uh, Right. So I'm going to make it look like Steve now has got great abs. So what you do when you're at home on your computer, you go to your hard drive and you find a picture of a friend of yours who's got abs. That's the first thing that you do. Then you get your freehand lasso tool. You make a very, very rough selection of his abs. And then you get your move tool and drag them over. And you bring them into here. Now you've got to resize them, obviously. Uh, oops, hello. Uh, got to resize it now to about there. And then we'll reposition it. I'll just lower the opacity so he hasn't got two belly buttons. So we'll go for something like that, let's say. Let's bring up the opacity. And we'll press Enter. OK, so the next thing we do then, like before, working non-destructive, we go Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. And then we go back to Old Faithful. We go Filter, Other, and High Pass. Let's take it right down. And this is where you're going to, you're in control now. You decide how good are his abs. How much is he paying you? Okay, how good do you want his abs to be? Well, with Steve, although he was only about this tall, he was a pretty tough guy. So I did go quite high with these. I did bring it up quite a bit. So we go to around about there, and we click OK, and we change the blend mode to something like soft light. Now, it's not there just yet, but at this stage, I just get a layer mask, and I get a black brush, and I paint it off areas that I don't want it. So something like that. And then I could maybe like duplicate it. And you can start playing with it. But this is how I work in Photoshop. I just play. And that's what I'd advise you guys to do. You can't break it. You can use smart filters. Just If you've got a, a dialog box that comes up, get those sliders and whack them to maximum. See what it does. Take them to minimum. See what it does. And just experiment. That's how you learn. Okay. But that's the kind of stuff that I like to do and play around with. Now let's show a very, very quick one. Very, very quick one here. This is one that uh, when I first started off uh, doing all this uh, retouching kind of stuff, um, roughly about eight and a half years ago, I think, in the magazines, and I presume it's the same wherever you are in the world, the magazines at that time, they thought that the best technique to teach you was how you can make somebody's teeth look white. You'd spend, they'd have pages in magazines to show you techniques to make teeth look great. But it'd be like four pages, 20 minutes plus, just working on teeth. That's boring. I want to get on with all the rest of the retouching. So there's ways that you can do whitening teeth very, very quickly, not using the pen tool or anything like that. Let's just uh, zoom in a second. Now, this is my mate Dave. These aren't his real teeth, I hasten to add. Uh, Dave is my, he's the guy that's on the front of the Focus magazine with a cigar. He's my, he's my best mate, he's my assistant. Uh, but these are false teeth, okay? Um, but they're a good example of what we can do here. So all we do to brighten them or to make them nice and uh, clean is get our freehand lasso tool, make a rough selection of the teeth. Then we go to a hue and saturation adjustment. We just choose yellows and we brighten them. Job done. No selections, none of that kind of rubbish. It's just now we can move on with the retouching. Now, I know that's just a little bit kind of Hollywood, okay? That's a little bit kind of film starry. But again, the great thing is you're in control. You're the retoucher. What were they like when you were photographing them? Were they good? Did they behave? Were they a bit of a diva? Because you can now bring them down a peg, all right? You can bring them down. Because rather than going that way with the slider, you could always go that way and bring it down just a bit. And then you can say to them, well, you know, it's, uh, it's out of camera. Uh, I can retouch your teeth if you like, but yeah, you might, I mean, you might want to consider doing a bit of dentistry if you're doing more modeling, but you know, just bring them down a peg, that's all. You're in control, don't tell them though. You don't have to tell them. All right, let's have a look at another technique. Is this okay? This is useful stuff? Cool, cool, okay, right. Let's have a look at um, some shadows. Oh no, let's have a look at cutout. Who does cutouts here? Who does compositing? Cool, one person. Brilliant, you can enjoy this. Uh, right. <laughs> Who's noticed that when, uh, when you look at tutorials online that talk about doing selections and doing cutouts, have you noticed they always do it on the most simplest background possible? It's like, let's see with this new tool, let's see if we can cut this person wearing black clothing off a white background. Hmm, 
this will be challenging. So, and of course it's going to work. Do you know what I mean? But most of the times, we're going to take maybe cutouts and selections of things that aren't that easy. Now, this is, a, this is a, a composite picture here. This is one that I did, I think I had like an hour's spare at home. And I, just, I just play. I told you my mind goes a bit funny sometimes. I was just playing. That's all I was doing. So the original shot is this one here. And I've just added the mice in afterwards just for the sake of it. Um, but let's just imagine, work with me on this, right? Let's just imagine that those mice really were there. And I want to cut out this little fella down here. I want to cut him off the background. So you might think, well, you know, we've been told that Refine Edge and Quick Selection Tool is like the answer to your cutout prayers. So let's try it. Let's go to Quick Selection. So we go to W on our keyboards, and we start to make a selection. Looks OK. Looks OK. Down there, that's fine. And then we get down here, and it's like, oh, God, here we go. And we have to spend ages trying to, oh, not a nightmare, trying to get it looking as good as we possibly can. And I would spend so long trying to get this to be half decent so I could make a cutout. But I experience this kind of stuff all the time. So we try and make as best a job as we can, let's say. And then we go, well, I'll tell you what, let's go to Refine Edge, this magic button at the top that they tell us is the, like, the answer. Uh, and then all I do is I just go to these magical sliders and I, I bring them across and then that will do great. But then you get all this kind of rubbish. You know, the background was really busy. All that milky kind of horrible junk starts to come in. And it, I just got so frustrated. So I, I brought these sliders down. There's also the uh, Refine Radius tool. And they say that if we use this, we paint down the back. And it picks up all those stray hairs. Yeah. And it brings in loads of other stuff as well, which I don't want. So I don't use that. When I'm doing tricky selections, when we're doing retouching for magazines and things, when it's really challenging, we don't do that. We make a very, very kind of rough selection, but then we just use a layer mask. That's all we do. Now, I'm just going to put a layer underneath here so you can see what I'm doing. So similar to the uh, Refine Edge tool there. So to kind of fake this, to make it look as if I really did do a really good cutout, what I do is this. Again, I go to my brushes, but this time I choose a hard-edged brush. And I make sure there's no settings in there, so we turn that off. And then all I do is I get rid of some of his fur. Now, it seems kind of weird doing that, but that's the first step. Then what I do is I get another brush. So I go into here. And these brushes are already in Photoshop. These two here, 112 and 134, have been in Photoshop since the year dot. They, they've always been there. But I'm going to use 112. And it's like a blade of grass. So once I've chosen it, I can now go to the brush presets. And I can use this little dialog box to start shaping this blade of grass to make it look like fur. So I can change the angle of it. And we'll go to shape dynamics. I can change the varied size so they're not all the same size, like so. Scattering, we can scatter them. We'll bring that down just a touch. We don't need that one, and we don't need that one. OK, so all I do then with a white foreground color is I zoom in. I might just change the angle just a touch. Let's just twist it down a touch. There we go. And then all I do is I come in. Oops, too big. Let's just go back just a touch. There we go. Get a brush. We bring it down in size, and then I just paint down his back. Like this. So I am faking it. <laughs> and yet I would go around the whole mouse doing that. OK, you know you've done it. And you can, you can play around with it, changing the angle of the brush so it looks good as it goes down his back. Um, but I did that with that mouse. Go around all the size, change the different size of it. You've then faked it. You know what you've done, but they don't. And that's what you do. It's like I said, Photoshop tools and the techniques, they're not just for one thing and one thing only. We can use them in all kinds of creative ways. And the way we find these out is just by playing. That's all it is, just by playing. OK, so in fact, just quickly, that technique there, let's have a look. I just, you might have seen when we first started, there was a picture that I've been working on since I've uh, been here in Holland. Just uh, let's have a look. this one here. It's just one I'm playing with at the moment. I haven't finished it. But I, I got this thing. I want to do something of elephants. Now, these, the elephants is one picture. Then I've got the grass I photographed somewhere else. But to make it look as if they're in the grass, all you do is you, put, you make a selection of the grass, 
put it over their feet, hide it behind a layer mask, and then get that brush, 112, and then paint it in. So it looks like the grass is over the feet. It looks like they're within the grass. Really, really simple. Okay? So you just, you know, the thing is, Photoshop can be made to appear hard, can't it? You know, there's this, it's the dark art. I can't possibly tell you my secret. It's not hard. It's, you all know this, but you maybe didn't think about it, that's all. But you, know, you all know layer masks, you know brushes. There's nothing earth shattering here, is there? It's just simple techniques. Okay, so, right, there's another one uh, involving shadows. I have fetishes about selections and cut, uh, shadows and lighting effects. But let me just show you this one. Uh, where are we? Let's just go to this one just here. And this is all to do with shadows. Now, I'm no landscape photographer, as you can see. Uh, but this, what I wanted to do here was show a technique. Again, it's my, for my YouTube channel. This was a video, shameless promotion. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Glyn Jewis. Um, I wanted to show a technique where you can make it look as if it's sunset. Now, the original picture, uh, I just ran out of the house one day and just took a very, very quick shot. That's the original, okay? So very, very flat light, cloudy sky, no shadows. And when I'm photographing backgrounds for my composite work, that's the kind of day I'm looking for. I don't want there to be shadows. I want to be the one that tells Photoshop where the shadows are. Otherwise, if I photograph the background and the shadows, when I do the photo shoot of the model, I've then got to copy that lighting. And that's hard. If I can just have flat lighting, then I can photograph the model, and then I can make the shadows in the background however, however I want them to be, all right? But let's have a quick look. I'm gonna show you how we can do the, uh, the actual effect with the shadow here. Adding that coloring, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. We've all got plugins like maybe Nick Color Effects Pro 4 and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let me have a look at show you how this shadow works. So I'm gonna show you on this picture here. Not the, I told you, not a landscape photographer. Uh, it's not the most exciting picture, but it's, it's one that I'm actually gonna use for a composite at some point. But it's a nice picture to be able to show the technique on. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it look as if the sun is round about here, coming across the, uh, the shot. So this area will all be in shadow. So we need to make that in shadow. So here's how we do it. It's like a magic trick, isn't it? Right, we're gonna to go to a levels adjustment. And initially you might think that you're just gonna get your midtones and darken them down. But that doesn't look realistic. Uh, that's probably how I would have done it a while ago. But that there, you've got the, uh, it's gone darker, but the bricks have become saturated, they've gone very red, and the grass has become very green. So it's not that realistic. So we'll reset that, and we're gonna use this little bar at the bottom. And this basically decides where in your picture the blacks are, where the whites are, and where the mid-tones are. So I can now get this white slider here and start to drag it into the middle. And this is a technique you can use when you want to turn day to night, which is a, a very popular thing to do. So we'll take it down to there. Now all the whole picture is dark at the moment. We don't want that, so we just invert the mask to hide it. And then I just get a brush. You know, there's, a, there's a pattern evolving here, brushes, layer masks, and blend modes. We get a brush, and a nice simple brush. Let's just go and get a hard edge brush. Again, we'll make sure there's no settings. And all I'm gonna do is just paint the darkness in here, so very, very quickly. So we'll say that it's gonna go from that corner of the building down to here. So I'll dab, hold down my shift key, click. Nice straight line. And then we'll just paint this in just here, like so. Now obviously I'm going really quickly, like that. Something like there. And we'll just do this little bit here. Now if this was on concrete, you could probably Hello. You could probably get away with it at this stage because it's a very straight line on the grass. But we know that when shadows hit the grass, the blades of grass are going to have the shadows on the individual blades. Okay, so we need to fake that look as well. And again, it's just using the brushes. 112 or 134, which are already built into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my brush. I'm going to choose 112. I could use the one next to it. Brush settings, and now again, I can use this little dialog box to shape how I want it to be. So we'll just add a bit of spacing, like so. We'll turn off color dynamics, we'll turn off transfer, 
And now what we'll do is we'll try and now bring this uh, line here to look as if the shadow's on the grass. Oh, look, we paint down the line like this, just to make the brush just a touch bigger. We paint down here, and you're faking it like this. Now, the actual effect you're doing is this. That's what you're creating. Oh, I've got to paint that bit in, but that's what you're creating. You're only revealing the shadow, the darkness, in that shape, and it's faking it. Now, there's a, there's a guy we know out in, uh, in the States called Joel Grimes. Everyone heard of Joel Grimes? Great photographer, retoucher. He's very much in both camps when it comes to this kind of work. He has a phrase that he says, selling the fake. That's all you're doing. I said it earlier. You're selling the fake. You know what you've done, but they don't. And that's all that matters, okay, if that's what works. So that's the effect of how we get the actual blades of grass. If I zoom in, you can kind of see the effect is given there. But we can now finish this off by adding in a little bit of a, a, bit of a sunset. Now, there's lots of ways we can do this with the colouring, but let's just zoom in. We'll go down here to a, let's choose a photo filter maybe, something like this. This is a very down and dirty way of doing it. But we'll choose warming filter 81, we'll warm it up. And then to get the sunset, my, fa my favourite blend mode in Photoshop is colour dodge. I love it. Did you see in the Iron Man picture earlier on when he got the blue light on his chest? That's all using colour dodge. It's a fantastic blend mode. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to get a normal brush, but it's going to be a light source, so it's going to be a soft brush. And we'll turn off the settings, make it nice and big around about there. And now I'm going to choose the colour that I want my sunset to be. So we'll go into there maybe. And I'm just going to add a dab. Oops, hold on. Not there. I'm going to add a blank layer first. You don't have to be clever to do this, all right? I'm going to add a blank layer once I've got my colour. Go to the oranges, something like that will be fine. And then we go dab. Doesn't look good at the moment, but then we go to the blend modes over here from normal to color dodge. And now things start to happen like this. And you can kind of play with it and do what you like with this kind of thing, resizing it and all that kind of stuff. Now, what I really like is how it is on the wall here, the way the light kind of skips onto the wall. I quite like that. Now, just to finish off, it's a wedding. Hello, hello, hello. A friend of mine who's a wedding photographer out in the UK, he uses the Colour Dodge blend mode in a really cool way. He photographs uh, the brides or the, uh, the, um, the bride-to-be, her, her hands. Very, very hard to take great pictures of hands, okay? Uh, and they've got their, their, their engagement ring on with the coloured stone. So what he does to take it to another level is he adds a blank layer above it, the ring picture in Photoshop. He samples the color of the stone, then he paints it around the ring on the finger, changes the blend mode to color dodge, and bang, it looks like some kind of light has hit. This is a weird microphone behaving funny here. It's playing with my head. Uh, it, then it lifts the picture so it looks though that the, the lights hit the color and it just totally changes the look of the picture. Very, very cool. But listen, we've, we've raced through there, some very, very quick techniques. Make sure if you didn't get it already, it is playing with my mind. Make sure you get that link just here, uh, and I'll spam the hell out of you. No, I won't. Um, I'll, just <laughs> I'll just send you the link so you can get all the, the videos to watch. Uh, but hey, thank you very much. Check out my YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, thank you.